Hi everyone and welcome back to another UE4 tutorial. This video was voted for by my patrons and YouTube members for the month of June. So thank you to everyone who's supporting me and voting for this month's video. This video is all about teleporters. So creating two teleporter pads that you can travel freely between one and the other. Now there are loads of different ways of doing this. Uh, this is going to be one method I'm going to show you in this video. But if it's something you want to see more of and you want to see the other methods, uh, leave a comment below and I'll get round to making the other methods as well. So um, before starting this video, I already created my teleporter pad, which you can see here. And I've got some basic vertex animation on here. And I've got particle effects set up and all sorts of things. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do these. We'll just focus on the actual act of teleporting. But if you want to download the project files for this, you can do by becoming a gold Patreon member over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where you can get all the project files for this and many other projects as well. So on to the actual task ahead. So you can use any mesh you like for this, any particle effect you like. It's totally up to you how you want it to look. Um, yeah, so totally up to you. So let's create a new actor. So I'm going to go to add new blueprint class and choose actor. And this will be called teleporter. And we're going to open it up. So the way it works is that this teleport actor is going to have two teleport pads on it. And then when we add an instance of this actor to the world, we can then customize where those two pads are located. So let's go on add component scene. And we'll call this one pad one. So a scene component is basically just a space inside the world. It's just a location. So this would be the location where pad one is located. And once we've done this one, we'll duplicate it for pad two. So onto the contents of pad one. So we need a mesh. So I'm going to go static mesh. And we'll call this one pad, uh, pad mesh one. And I'm going to choose on the right hand side my mesh. Search for my teleport pad. And there it is. And then going to add to that a particle system. And we'll call this one pad glow one. And on the right hand side again, I'm going to choose my teleporter glow like so. And I'm just going to raise this one up a little bit so I can see my little white ring. There we go. A little bit higher. Excellent. Let's put that down to 10 as I look. That'll do. Okay, so um, our actor here is basically done visually, but we also need to set up the actual interactive parts. So we need to set up the uh, actual area that's going to be defined as where the player has to stand for it to activate. So we're going to click on my pad mesh one static mesh, go add component, and we use our sphere collision. And it's going to be called pad area one. And let's just customize this. So my sphere radius is this. It's going to be 150. And I'm going to just raise it up um, 100. So it's above, like it's almost sitting on top of it. OK, so you want it quite large um, to make it fair for the player. And lastly, we need to add the target location. So this would be where the player is teleported to onto the pad. And this doesn't have to be on the pad. It could be around it, over it, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to click on my pad mesh one and go scene component and go pad target one and I'm going to just raise this slightly above the pad to solve any collision issues 30 should do it just fine in my case but again it's totally up to you based on your own designs and desires for your pad so there's pad one done now I need to do pad two so if I select all of this right click and duplicate you can see now I've got pad two and you can see it's automatically renamed them accordingly. This will only happen if you put the number at the end of the name. So it's a good place to put the number is at the end. So with pad two, with it selected as a scene component, I can move that to the side and you can see I've now got two pads. Okay. So if I was to put this into the world, I can see two pads, but I can also customize where the second pad goes. So if I click on pad two on my right hand details panel, I can then move that to wherever I want. So I can move it up there, for example. Okay, so you can do whatever the hell you like. So that's the pad setup. And you can see up there. 
but now we actually need to make the actual code for us to teleport between the two. So back onto our event graph, we're going to delete what's currently there, we don't need any of it. And we're going to do the code first of all for pad 1, and then we'll go back and do the code for pad 2. So pad 1, we're going to click on the pad area 1, right click, add event, and you want to add on component begin overlap. Now begin overlap, component, add, sorry, on component begin overlap, what that does, it triggers as soon as any component of another actor with the correct settings overlaps it and triggers it. So in the case of the player character, in this case, it's going to trigger it multiple times, which we don't want it to do, we only want to trigger it once. And so to do that, we need to get the player character reference and refer to a specific component that we want to use as reference. So long story short, we need to get the player character. So I'm going to go right click in the empty space and do a begin play. And we're going to right click again and get player character. And you want to cast that towards um, the name of your actor, that is your player character. Mine is first person character because I'm using the first person template. And from there, we're going to store that as a reference. So right uh, from as first person character, come out there and do promote to variable. And we're going to name this one uh, player character. So now on begin overlap, uh, for pad area one, we can drag player character out, choose get, and then from there, we can get the capsule component, which is the uh, the main collision component for the player character. If I scroll down the bottom, it'll be at the bottom. There we go. And I want to make sure that that is the one that's overlapping our area. So where it says other comp, that stands for component. So we're going to make sure that it's equals. So do equals equals to our capsule component and this will go into a branch be whether it's true or false okay so if that is true we're going to set up a timer now this timer is going to be a sort of a, a cooldown so that when the player enters the space they're not immediately get teleported they have to wait inside that space for a couple of seconds before the teleport takes place so we're going to do set timer by event and the event we're going to do a custom event. And we call this one teleport to two. Now this is going to be the function or the event rather that triggers the teleportation towards our target two. So to do that we need to set up the function for teleporting. So go to the functions list on the left hand side and choose new function. And we call this one teleport. Click compile. Now teleport function is going to take one input, so go over to the right hand side and choose new parameter. And we'll call this one target. And the type for this is going to be a vector. Hit compile. Next we're going to drag our player character variable out, choose get, and then from there go set actor location to that target location. And hit compile. And we're done there. Go back to your event graph and you want to drag that over to your teleport to two. Now the target location is going to come from our pad target two. So drag pad target two out and get world location. So that's going to get the world location of the pad target two to so wherever you've placed it and make it teleport towards it. Okay. So Back to our timer, we need to set up a time and store the return value. So the time here we'll do as a variable and we'll do teleport time and that'll be a float. Compile and set a default value for this one to two seconds. Let's drag that onto time and then return value, we're going to store that as a variable. So go promote to variable and call it teleporter. Or teleport timer there we go and that should do for pad area one for now pad area two we can duplicate all of this over so let's right click on pad area two add event uh, begin overlap and you can pretty much copy all of it barring a couple of things so let's copy all this this and this 
You don't want to copy the custom event because uh, we make a new one. Copy and paste. And let's plug that in to the relevant nodes and do a custom event. This one's going to be called teleport to one. And pad target two, we don't want, we want pad target one. So this one is going to handle the teleportation to pad one. So now we've got the teleportation working, but what will happen now is it will actually just teleport me back and forth between the platforms no matter what. So we need to make it so that when I leave the platform, it resets it and allows you to teleport once again. So we need to set up a couple of things. First of all, we need to set up a cooldown for our teleporter. So on my variables list, we're going to click on new variable and we're going to say on cooldown. And this can be a boolean. Now at the start of your begin overlaps for both the pads, we need to check whether this is uh, not true. So drag out your on cooldown, choose get, and then from there, not boolean. And this is going to check whether it is false. So we're going to check if that is and, and this one is connected to that as well. And that will go into our condition. So it's checking both these conditions, whether or not on cooldown is false and that the player capsule is a thing that's collided with it. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into my base uh, for, sorry, pad two. Like so. And then we need to go to our teleport function. And at the end of this, we're going to drag on cooldown out and choose set. And we'll make it set to true. And click compile. So now when we teleport, it's going to go on cooldown meaning that we cannot teleport again from any pad. So now we need to work out how do we actually make it so it turns the cooldown back off so that we can actually re-teleport again. And that's where the end overlap comes in. So again, we're going to do it for pad one and then we're going to duplicate it for pad two. So right click on pad one, go add event, end overlap. And I'm just going to drag and drop this oh, over here. Um, where it makes a bit more sense, right next to the begin overlap. And the thing we need to do is check whether or not the, um, when we end the overlap with this, whether it, any part of it is currently overlapping the player actor. So we need to right click in the empty space here and go, um, is overlapping. And you want the one for pad area one. So pad area one is overlapping actor and the other here is going to be our player character reference. So drag that in like there. And this will give you a return value, true or false. We're going to click on a branch and hook that up as the condition. So if overlapping actor is, uh, sorry, it's not true. This has to be a not in between here. Not true then we need to reset everything. So to reset everything, we need to tell the teleport timer to cancel out. So if it's still counting down when we leave it, we can clear the timer so it doesn't teleport us when we're nowhere near it. So drag teleport timer out, choose get, and you want to do clear and invalidate timer by handle. And then finally, you want to come out of there and do on cooldown, drag that out, choose set, and we'll make sure it's set to false. And as I said, you can duplicate this for the same for pad area two. So right click on pad area two, add event, end overlap. And then copy all that down to pad area two. And the only thing you need to change is on the is overlapping actor to the pad area one, we use pad area two. And hit compile. Now let's test this out. So if I go over to pad one, it teleports me to pad two, and it won't teleport me back until I step off of this platform. So I step off, go back on, and it'll teleport me back to pad two. And there you have it. And that's how you do a teleportation. 
Now, as I said, there's multiple ways of doing this. This is just one. If you'd like to see the other ways of doing this or other different methods, please leave a comment below and let us know. I'd be interested to see if that's something people want to see. Plus, this was a one uh, video that was voted on by my supporters. So if you want to uh, pitch in an idea for a future poll, leave a comment below about what videos you'd like to see. And I'll be interested to see what I can put into the polls for the following months. Thank you for everyone who voted for, sorry, sorry, voted for this video. And uh, thank you for everyone for supporting me so far on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Um, if you want to become a patron and get access to all these videos before anyone else, as well as many other benefits, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan where you too can then cast your vote for the next month's video. And make sure you hit that subscribe button, where I release videos every single week and live shows, and you don't want to miss out. So hit that subscribe button and the little notify bell to get alerts for each video released. Thank you for everyone for watching and your continued support, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.